It's a great time to be together. Um, I know that some been some pretty tough things have happened in the last couple of days. Um, Faye Burton's son-in-law passed away last Sunday and was buried yesterday. I talked with Faye and um, she said they had so much snow, they're snowbound. She didn't know when they'd be able to get home. Expecting more snow today. They weren't even able to have the actual burial. They had the funeral service, but uh, said there were some 600 people there and just such a loved man. He was only 58 years old, her son-in-law, and left a son and, and a 13-year-old daughter and, of course, his wife. But, but then yesterday, early in the morning, our sister Trish Rogers passed away, if you hadn't heard that. Um, shocking for us, sad. Uh, Faye said that Trish would call her every day and uh, encourage her, and she's just, you know, and so a lot, a lot of us are hurting. Uh, but in God's wisdom, he created the church. And of course, as Christians, we know that our home is in heaven. Our names have been written in the book of life. Jesus prepared a place for us, and, and that's where we all want to be. Uh, but for those who remain, it, it's hard. It's hard, even though we're happy for them, but we're sad for us. And um, if you're visiting with us, I just want to welcome you, but I also want to encourage you to be a part of this family. I've been here for over five years now, and the relationships just get dearer and dearer, and it's amazing. And uh, yesterday we had a deacon's workshop, and uh, Travis Irvin from the Athens Church of Christ in Athens, Tennessee was here, and, and he gave the workshop, and he was so impressed with our deacons and our elders and, and the, the spirit and willingness to work and our interest in, in God's work and the relationships that we had. And he was so impressed, and it's true. Uh, the, the longer I'm here, the more impressed I am. I appreciate so much, Jeff, the, the meditation, the, the work and thoughts he put in just helped us uh, participate in the Lord's Supper in such a... Uh, a vibrant way, and I just appreciate that so much. And just, just all of you, I just, I want to thank you. So, if you're visiting with us, we want you to be a part of this great family of God, and uh, I know you'll be blessed by it. Uh, Corey and I, and Paige and Becky, we spent this past week at the Fried Hardeman Lectures. Now, it's held every year the first full week in February, and you might want to put that on your calendar, maybe a good time to take vacation and do that. It, there are other workshops and conferences and lectureships around the brother who have been to PTPs, fabulous as well. Uh, but probably, for me anyway, it was the best Fried Hardeman lectures I've been. I think Corey was real excited about it. Well, maybe partly because of the, the theme. It was Entrusted with the Faith, Multi-Generational Mission in Timothy and Titus. And uh, it's kind of a complicated, <laughs> maybe, theme, but the idea is passing the faith along from grandfather to son to grandson and, and our families and, and, and equipping our children uh, with the knowledge of God's Word and, and helping them to grow in the faith. And so it was just uh, explored in, in a lot of different ways and very, um, just very inspirational for us. And, of course, being with, with friends, uh, old friends, a lot of uh, good brothers and sisters we haven't seen for a while. So uh, that's something I want to thank the church uh, on behalf of Corey and me uh, just for allowing us that, that privilege. Okay, uh, Jesus used object lessons to teach a lot of things. You know, usually, typically preachers talk about expository preaching or topical preaching. And, and that's good, and there are benefits of one to the other. Uh, but Jesus used a lot of object lessons, you know, when he was at the well with a woman and she was drawing out water. He took advantage of that and told her about the water of life. Or when he had fed 5,000 and after that he taught the disciples about the bread of life. And it just goes on and on. For example, uh, when he saw sparrows, he was talking with his disciples and told them how God takes care of them. They don't you know, they just exist and God takes care of them. The, the lilies of the field, the sparrows. Um, he talks about perhaps he saw a sower out throwing seed in the field and he took advantage of that and made an object lesson out of it and talked about the four soils of the heart and, and what happens about that. And uh, I, I really like when he calls a child to him and talks about the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and, uh, and said, if we don't become like a child, we won't go into the kingdom. And, 
And then when he saw, he was sitting purposefully in the temple watching how people were uh, offering their contribution. And he saw this widow, this poor widow lady. She only had two coins. That's all she had left. And she put both of those coins in the, in the offering there. And he said, look, she gave more than all these others who gave out of the abundance of, of their, their means. And then, of course, he talks about a shepherd and that he's a good shepherd and that we're the sheep. And, and, and it just goes on and on. So this morning, I want to do something that might seem a little strange, but it's an object lesson. It's just Jesus never talked about uh, jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> and uh, actually, jigsaw puzzles, from what I can understand, have only been around for about uh, 200 years. Uh, they would make them out of wood in the past and use a jigsaw to cut out different pieces. And they've gotten more sophisticated today. The most are probably out of uh, cardboard. But uh, uh, some time back, I was over at Miss Beard's house and she and Bob have been putting together a jigsaw puzzle. Now they're working on another one. And uh, it's pretty neat. Now, I was tempted to take one piece out of that and wait for them to get to the last <laughs> part and finish it up and they wouldn't be able to find that last piece but I restrained myself I didn't do it so but I was tempted but I, I actually found this uh, jigsaw puzzle it's it's a Disney puzzle and it's one of the largest that they make it came out in 2017 it has over 40,000 pieces and it actually has 10 different scenes from Disney movies and stuff and that's way beyond my uh, capacity but who who here has ever done a jigsaw puzzle or at least help work on one raise your hand you've done so quite a few of you and, uh, and and it's probably pretty rare that a jigsaw puzzle you do it all by yourself at least you know somebody will walk by and put at least one piece on there so uh, I want to talk about four Bible lessons from a jigsaw puzzle the first is that the creator of the puzzle typically puts a picture on the box of what the puzzle is supposed to look like when it's finished and that helps you to be able to put it together because you see all those colors and small intricate pieces and you kind of really don't know what you're looking at. So it, if you have that picture, it really gives you a good idea of where you're headed. Well, as Christians, uh, our Creator gave us a picture of what we're supposed to look like, not that uh, we're supposed to be like Jesus. That's what God wants from us. And Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. And so we, if we want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. And if we want to know what God wants us to be like, look at Jesus. Jesus loved the poor. He loved those who couldn't help themselves, the widows, uh, the sick. He, was in, he, 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 he loved the lost and he died. Jeff explained how much he suffered and how he died to save every one of us. And so God wants us to be uh, like Jesus. In Romans chapter 8, in verse 29, the Bible says... For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. Now, when the Bible talks about predestination, it doesn't mean in an individual way, like this one I'm going to choose and this one I'm not. There's nothing you can do to, to make that good or bad. No, he's talking, he predestined those that you know, are, are given their lives to God, those who repent of their sins, who uh, confess Jesus as Lord or, or wash their sins away in baptism and, and follow him faithfully. Those have been predestined as a group. And so here he says, his will has always been that those people look like Jesus. In Galatians chapter 4, uh, Paul writes and he says, My little children for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. So God wants us to look like Jesus inside and out. Uh, 2 Corinthians, or Romans chapter 11, verse 1, Paul says, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So, so we're to look like Jesus, we're to walk like Jesus, to act like him. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible says, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, as we uh, contemplate Jesus, as we contemplate God, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So God works in us as we're, we're watching, we're, we're meditating, as our faith grows and God transforms us. I see and when, when I read in the Bible, for example, in John chapter 2, the Bible says that Jesus got angry at sin. When he saw those people in the temple abusing those 
worshipers that had come from afar and, and, and financially abusing them. The Bible says he went out and made a whip and went in there and drove those people out and turned over those tables. In Mark chapter 10, verse 21, the Bible says that even Jesus loved those who turned their back on him. You know, that rich young ruler that supposedly was such a great guy. Well, Jesus said, look, go and sell everything you've got and come be one of my disciples. It was a personal invitation, one that he just didn't extend to everyone. And that young man went away sorrowful because the Bible says he had a lot and he wasn't willing to part with that. But the Bible says that Jesus loved him. It wasn't just love those who serve him, love those who are, are, are doing his well. He loves everybody and wants everybody to look like him. And then last of all, in John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus says that my food is to do the will of the Father who sent me. So God wants us to be like that. Just what motivates us, what, what gets us up in the morning is to do the will of the Father. A second way or a second thing that we can learn from jigsaw puzzles is don't force a fit. You know, we try that. You know, that looks like it might work, and you kind of you kind of push hard. Maybe if I can just push hard enough, that cardboard will kind of fall in place. And well, it doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, the Bible talks gives us a lot of good ideas of how we can know God's will, and it's not easy. Uh, I want to call your attention to Acts chapter 16, and I know this is a there's some miraculous operation going on here and it doesn't exactly totally apply to us but but turn over to Acts chapter 16 and there are some things here that we can see that, that, that might apply to us Acts chapter 16 beginning at verse 6 and they went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia and when they had come up to Mysia they attempted to go into Bithynia but the spirit of Jesus did not allow them verse 8 so passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Verse 10. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Well, uh, God's not going to appear to us or uh, have visions in this, but He does... Uh, help us understand His will through open and closed doors. For example, in Colossians chapter 4, turn over there in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 3, the Bible says, Paul's writing to the Colossians, and he says, at the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the Word. Now that's not necessarily a miraculous operation, but just God's providence of giving Paul, an opportunity to speak the word. And, and he goes on to say, not only that I have an opportunity, but I'll be able to say it in a way that those people will understand it. It'll be clear. Uh, and, and that's what we can pray for as well. We can ask God, Lord, open this door for us if it's your will. And, and this is, you know, what we're thinking. It's good. It's, it's our plan. But we want your blessing. And if it is, you know, then can it happen? You know, so often uh, young people it's normal that you want to grow up and you want to find somebody to spend your life with, to get married, a spouse. And so, you know, we go out searching. Uh, my roommate in college, uh, I wasn't going, thinking about getting married then because I came from sort of a, a nasty home life with my parents at the time weren't Christians. And so I thought, no, marriage is for when you get really old and decrepit, like 30. And so my roommate was making a list of all those he wanted to, to get, possibly could get married. That's normal, you know, and you go out and you ask somebody else. So I encouraged him, look, the best girl on campus is Becky Beard. And I loaned him my car. I loved this, my roommate, and he was so neat. And so he took her to the campus movie Cinderella, and he came back, and I was so excited. Well, did it go? How'd it go, John? He said, oh, I don't think it's going to work out. So I was sad, but I'm glad God, God closed that door. It blessed me. So we just, we, we don't have to force a fit. Just wait for God's time. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. God's involved in our lives. That's why we pray. We pray for healing. We pray for you know, wisdom. James chapter 1, verse 5. Uh, pray for wisdom. And another thing that we can 
be blessed by God is, is looking for the godly counsel of others. In Psalm chapter 37, verse 30, the Bible says, The godly offer good counsel. They teach right from wrong. You know, we get involved in a love relationship and uh, because you, you're in that romantic thing, you, kinda, you think you're in love with love, not really the person. You don't know them that well, but you're just so happy and you've got somebody that's maybe interested in you and it kind of blinds us. And so with good godly counsel, we can, you know, maybe be saved from a bad situation. Before I became a Christian, I dated several girls. I thought, well, this is it, and it didn't work out, and I was sad. Today I look back, oh, thank you, Lord. And uh, there was one gospel preacher. I went to school with him, and he's really well known. And, and uh, he was dating a girl that she was a Christian, but I could tell she was not interested. In our, we would have Bible studies, and she was bored silly. And I pulled him aside, and I said, look, um, if you want to be a preacher, I, I, this girl is not for you. She is not for you. And, and he listened and he broke up with her and found a great Christian wife and today has a great ministry. So listen to godly counsel and uh, from people that are outside your, you know, your emotional sphere. Uh, the third thing that we can learn from a jigsaw puzzle is just to enjoy the puzzle. Uh, that sounds kind of funny, but some people, well, it's so complicated. You know, all those little pieces and those colors and everything. But as Christians, variety in life. Life is complicated. And it's not easy. But we have different kinds of people. One of the things that we learned yesterday in, in our, our workshop about how different personalities and gifts that people have will affect the ministries that they're involved in. That's why God gives us an eldership. We're not just led by one elder, but it's an eldership. What one lacks, the other complements. And it, it, there's wisdom in that group. And so uh, enjoy uh, life, enjoy ministry. Uh, we don't rush through. To, the, the purpose of a jigsaw puzzle isn't to get through. Whew, I'm done now. Put that away. No, it's, yeah, there is a satisfaction in finishing it, but there's enjoyment in working on it and thinking through it and looking and observing. And uh, so uh, life is the same way. Some people, they want to, uh, oh, I can't wait till I get married. And then after they get married, well, I can't wait till I, we have kids. And after they have kids, I can't wait till these kids grow up and, and move out. And, and then we think, well, then I can't wait till I have grandkids. And then I can't wait till I retire. And then I can't, no, I can't wait till I die. But we're always trying to rush through life. No, enjoy the journey. We don't know. James chapter 4, verse 13 says, 14, we don't know what's going to be in our life tomorrow. We don't know how long will be our life. Even if we live a long life, it's just a mist. So Jesus said that he came to give us an abundant life. And enjoy it now. And certainly we'll enjoy uh, heaven. Uh, <clears throat> they even come out with these 3D jigsaw puzzles. And this one says four to six years. Uh, one guy was bragging and said, yeah, it says four to six years, but I did it in just three months. Oh, well, if you don't understand that. Let's move to number four. Pay attention to the borders. You know, that's kind of where you need to start. It's easy to find, discover those, looking at the box, the picture, you can see that straight edge on there, and you do the borders and work, work in from there. Uh, well, as Christians, we need to pay attention to God's Word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All Scripture is breathed by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. You know, we usually use that passage to talk about the inspiration of the Scriptures, and obviously that's true. But it, this passage also talks about how important the, the, the Word of God is to bless our lives, to help us to be at peace with God. Uh, you know, we can know that God exists without the Bible. The Bible says that. It's true. We know just looking at nature, this world couldn't come to be without God. But we can't know exactly what He wants and how it is that we're saved from our sins and how we should live. So the Word of God, uh, it, it gives us security. It gives us direction. It, it gives us uh, order in our, in our lives. Psalm 119, verse 105 says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial 
and sincere. Ever since the beginning of time, people try to figure out life. Life, life is complicated. Life is a puzzle. And uh, you've got to look there for the missing piece. If you need God's blessing, we ask that you come as together we stand and sing.